Even though Greg Roman talked the talk, will he actually walk the walk and really make significant changes with this Ravens offense this year? Why a lot of fans may be overreacting to the fact that Adafe Away had no sacks in 2020. What are your expectations for wide receiver Rashad Bateman? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. You know just what I mean. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's seeing Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers and this is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this if you would like to be a part of NFL questions from subscribers you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon and we'll answer your question in a video just like this team keep it clean I love y'all I appreciate y'all this is the very first first episode of questions from subscribers post draft post draft so we made it we made it through it took some time but we got there but i love y'all team keep it clean real quick shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons uh special thank you to you all for doing what you do uh we all appreciate you on here and all of y'all thank you so much for supporting um shout out to anybody that's new here welcome to team keep it clean uh it don't matter what team you're a fan of you are more than welcome to come hang out with us and just vibe so love y'all appreciate y'all we got some good questions as we always do and let's start off talking about some greg roman the so first question came from my boy rainmaker he said engraving hope all is well with you and the fam i was watching the bateman press conference and they had Giro on there as well he was asked a lot about expanding the offensive playbook this year it sounded good but we haven't really seen diversity in his play calling do you think he had plays he was unable to use based off of his personnel or was it him just being lazy because of lamar's dynamic playmaking uh, i know he has sammy watkins back and with a potential number one in Bateman now, do you think he expands this playbook to look more balanced? I'm sure the new coaches will have some impact as well. Keep up the good work and stay safe. Appreciate it, man. So, yes, Greg Roman did talk about that. He talked about uh, opening up this offense and just adding some new wrinkles to this offense uh, and doing some more things that we hadn't seen. Now, I, I think I can, and I don't speak for all Ravens fans. I certainly don't. Not at all. Um, but I, I think that most Ravens fans will certainly agree that with Greg Roman, we, we, we've seen him. We, we've seen him. We've seen him and we know him as Ravens fans. 49ers fans have seen him and they know him. Bills fans have seen him and they know him. And so, so we're very familiar with him um, and we're very familiar with what he does on offense. So him, him saying that he's going to add some new wrinkles to the offense and whatnot, that's cool. But for us, seeing is believing. So we can hear him say all this and all that, but it's not going to hit until we actually see it. See, let, 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 me just, let me just jog your memory a little bit right here. Let me, let, let me just try to take you back just a little bit last year. Greg Roman, there was a point in the season, later on in the season, where he talked about he was going to forge a new identity with the Baltimore Ravens. Y'all remember that? I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us forgot. A lot of us forgot and it's no problem if you did. But he said he was going to forge a new identity with the Baltimore Ravens. Did we see a new identity forged? No, we didn't. We didn't. So this is why seeing is believing because he could talk the talk, but we got to see you walk the walk. Now, I do feel like this year he will be forced to. He will certainly be forced to add some new things uh, to this offensive playbook, add some new plays, get some different guys involved in different ways. I feel like he will have to do that. Why? Because Eric DaCosta, he gave him that tap on the shoulder uh, publicly and privately. He probably told him behind closed doors, Greg, hey, <laughs> yeah. Keith, Keith Williams, T. Martin. Yeah, they are just wide receiver coaches, but trust me. They are going to do a lot more for you than you expect. And you need to listen to, hopefully this is what he said, you need to listen to them. I'm not saying they're here to override you or even take your job or anything like that, but you should feel threatened because this thing has got to get much better than it is. We've got these guys, we got these different players, and we, we draft them for a reason, we bring them in for a reason, but we have to find a reason to use them. So I'm letting you know now, I ain't going to put this out in the public, but I'm letting you know now, like, hey, let's get it done. But then he also publicly, 
publicly gave Greg Roman that tap on the shoulder like, hey, let's move this thing forward. How did he do that? Well, he said, Greg Roman, look, I don't, I don't want any excuses. I want absolutely zero excuses. So you know what I'm going to do? I am going to bring somebody in that you're very familiar with, that's very familiar with you, and the, the wide receiver that had the most success in your system. The, the, in your system. He's coming here. And you are going to be a, you're going to be a very integral part uh, of his success. And hopefully he will have a lot of that. And that's Sammy Watkins. So he brought in Sammy Watkins. And he's like, hey, Greg, I'm not done. Our very first pick. I know all these people have been talking about we need a receiver this, we need a receiver that. And frankly, I'm insulted by that. But I'm, I'm so insulted that our first round draft pick, our first first round draft pick is going to be Rashad Bateman. Yeah, that's that guy that Engraven wanted from jump, Rashad Bateman, but this ain't about Engraven and them. It's not. It's about you, Greg. And I am going to give you guys, the, and you know what? We're not even going to stop there. You know what? Tyler Wallace. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bring them on. So it's like Eric DaCosta has publicly let Greg Roman know the time is now. Now, it's not just on Greg Roman now. It's on Lamar as well. It's on Lamar to see the field better. It's on Lamar to use all of his guys that much more. And we've been talking about that for a long time too. So it's not just on Greg Roman. It's not. But that's where it starts. That's where it starts. He is the one that coordinates this offense. It's him. He's the one that calls the plays. It's him. So he is the head of this whole ship. And everybody else is under him. Everybody. Everybody follows his orders. Only person who wouldn't need to follow his orders who can sort of override him as the manager, that would be John Harbaugh. But everybody else, they're under Greg Roman. So he got to, he, he got to get this thing rolling, man. And again, we don't need the Ravens to go from 32nd passing offense uh, to top 10 or top 15. We don't need them to do that. They're going to continue to be a running team. But the efficiency just has to be better. And, and really using guys and playing guys to their strengths has to be better. That's why for us, seeing is believing. Because we've heard, we've heard talk before. We, we've heard talk from the team before. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We, we've heard it before, but it don't mean nothing if we don't see that product on the field. So it's going to take everybody. It's, go, it's going to take a group effort. Everybody got their hand in this thing. It starts with Greg Roman. Then everybody else got to follow suit, man. Everybody does. We know what Lamar Jackson's capable of. And he did mention in his question, too, uh, he said, do you think that Greg Roman had plays he was unable to use based off of his personnel? No, I, I don't think that was it. Because the, the, the personnel was much different uh, over in San Francisco, much different over in Buffalo. But you saw a lot of the same stuff. And not to say, and not to say that, oh, man, uh, offensive coordinators, whenever they go to a new team, they, they don't use none of this old plays. No, because that's definitely not true. That, that's far from true. Offensive coordinators, they got a certain style of things that they like to do and things that they have success with. So Greg Roman did that. But even just based off of what we saw with the Ravens over the past couple of years, even going from uh, 2019, because I know everybody likes to say, oh, well, hey, nobody was complaining in 2019. Lamar Jackson won the MVP with Greg Roman as the offensive coordinator, and he certainly did. He did. But I know a lot of people weren't here back then with Team Keep It Clean, and that's cool because growth is a beautiful thing. So I appreciate y'all, all the new people, the old people, but something that I said back then. I was like, all right, 2019 was cool. It was great. Phenomenal. We had a lot of fun. Oh, boy, we had a lot of fun that year, except in the playoffs. But we had a lot of fun. But my biggest question after 2019 was, oh, okay, what's next? What's the follow-up? What you going to do now? And one of the biggest things I continued to say and, and hope for was that the Ravens, they would really take that next step forward with their passing offense. They would really take that next step forward. Because I expected Lamar Jackson to throw for more touchdowns, but I also expected him to throw for more interceptions. Now, I was right on one of those things, uh, but not the, uh, the, the, the first one. Um, so I just, let's see. 
Let's see. Because, again, with Greg Roman, we're rooting for him for sure. We want to see this offense have success. But, again, as far as the new plays and stuff, seeing is believing. But Eric DaCosta, you know, he feels like, hey, I did what I had to do on my part. I, I gave you what you needed. I gave you more than what you needed. And especially when it comes to the wide receiver room, it's a little crowded in there. It's a little crowded in there. And, and you know, the Ravens, they're going to have to make some, some decisions this year. And there's going to be somebody that some people like that's gone. There's going to be somebody that some people don't like that ends up being gone because you, you, you can't keep everybody. You can't keep everybody. That's why the NFL is such a tough business, man. And it's going to be very, it's going to be sad when that time comes, when that day comes and people's numbers are called, but for the wrong reasons. So, again, seeing is believing, man. Seeing is believing. And we just, we're not going to be like, and I don't think we should be like, and it's not a bad thing. It doesn't make anybody like a bad fan to be like, oh, man, I don't believe that yet. No, it doesn't. Because I don't think you should. I don't think you should, even though I, I do think, like, with what the Ravens have done this offseason, especially at wide receiver, some things are going to be different. They got to add some stuff. Like, I mean, really? Especially because that pressure's on them, too, especially with Rashad Bateman. That pressure is on him because now Rashad Bateman, he figures to be one of your top receivers. Sammy Watkins, Hollywood, and Rashad Bateman are going to get in the mix, too. You, you got to feel that way. You got to. A first round draft pick, you think you think he's gonna be on the sideline the whole time? Oh no. And not that he's gonna be this day one starter, anything like that. But he's certainly gonna have significant playing time. He, first round draft pick. You think Eric DaCosta gonna let he gonna say, I, I gave you a first round draft pick at the wide receiver position. What more do you want? And then Greg Roman gonna be like, Well, you should have went out and got somebody that's been that guy. Then Eric DaCosta, yeah, nope. I heard that from the fans all offseason. I don't want to hear no more. But that's all good, man. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see when we get there. We'll see when we get there. Um, I don't think we should just be in la-la land and be like, oh, yeah, everything will be just fine. And, then, yeah, we're going to see so many positive changes and da 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 And not that we're being pessimistic, but we need to be uh, cautious with this thing. And don't, don't just buy into everything that they're saying just like that. Let's see. Let, let, let's let's see what they do, and then we'll go from there. Next question came from my boy Nick Britt. He said, I hope you like the draft as much as I did. In this pivotal offseason, I feel like I finally see the vision that EDC, a.k.a. Every Dollar Counts, has for the team. I like that one. Uh, in a year where we could have went either way, I wanted him to kind of YOLO it and try to win now, trading for Julio, A-Rob, signing a free agent, pass rusher, etc. Me too. Uh, it seems that he's taking the long-term approach of paying Lamar, and growing the talent in-house. In other words, EDC said, we ain't going to McDonald's, we got food at the house. Uh, my question is, how do you feel about this approach? Are you with it, or would you have preferred going broke for Julio and trying to win next year? Originally, I was all for going all in ASAP, but after this draft, I can buy into the vision and just enjoy being a fan of a good team uh, for years to come. Oh, yeah, we, we definitely enjoy uh, being a fan of the team, but no, I wanted them to go all in. I felt like they should have been went all in. Why? Because you have Lamar Jackson and you have been, yeah, every dollar counts. That's a very, very great just term right there. But I felt like they should have went all in, all in, like straight up. Because I feel when they got Sammy Watkins, I'm like, okay, cool. No, let's not be done there. Let's not be done. Let's go out and get somebody. Let's go out and get that guy. But they didn't do that. So they didn't do it. It's okay. We'll see how everything works itself out. And I understand the, the homegrown talent. And I understand that Eric DaCosta, I, I see what he's trying to do. He's really trying to turn that page at wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens because they've been stuck on that page two in the book for so long. They've been stuck at the beginning of the chapter at, at, at the wide receiver book for so long. They're trying to flip it. They're trying to get there. With Torrey Smith, he like I, I had some a conversation with somebody in the comment section the other day. They were like, with, with the Ravens, they were like, well, because they they weren't feeling the Rashad Bateman pick. And I'm like, okay, cool. We all entitled to our own, our, our own opinion. But they were like, when's the last time a rookie Ravens receiver made an made an impact? That's what his question was. And I said, what? I said, um, hello, Hollywood, hello. His very first game, what, he got two touchdowns and like 150 yards? Is that, is that not an impact? 
And then even throughout the season. And this dude was playing like at 50%. He wasn't even there all the way. He certainly had an impact. And then with Torrey Smith, his first game, he had three touchdowns. Now, besides that, it's been a little yikes. But no, man. So with uh, with Eric DaCosta's approach, I understand he's trying to really push this thing forward when it comes to the wide receivers. But I still would prefer that they went all in. Next question came from my boy Danny B. He said, I think a lot of Ravens fans are overreacting when it comes to OA's sack stats. We drafted Ferguson and Judon, who led the NCAA in sacks, but didn't test the greatest. And it didn't translate to a whole lot of sacks in the league. Ooh, I, I I talked about that in the uh, in the away video. Um, yeah, it it like it's like a flip flop, man. Um, especially with with Sack Daddy. Uh, but it, there's been a lack of opportunity as well. But it just I don't know. It just hasn't looked. It hasn't looked so good yet. But again, that that transition from college to the NFL, it is a big leap. And, and I mean, the more opportunities you get to take that leap, like the more chances you get on with playing time, uh, I think the better you'll do, and the better we can really evaluate you. But it's, it's been a little bit rough for him so far, so hopefully he can start to sort of turn, turn that corner soon. Uh, and he said, Ravens always talk about setting that edge, and that's something that Away does so well already. Well, that's a beautiful thing. He said, they can let the dog off the leash and really develop him into a three-down outside linebacker. Hey, we'll see, man. We'll see, because he is certainly a, uh, a project. Because he, he's not a polished product yet, but he's certainly... Um, He's a he's a project, but he's one of them projects where it's like uh, you like almost finished with it, but you ain't quite done with it yet. You got some little tweaks you could do here and there because you like it. If, if you turn this project in right now, you turn it in right now, you can get a solid a C plus, maybe a B minus. And you can be like, OK, cool. Yeah, I'm done. Turned it in. I passed. But if you ch change and tweak some things, you add some improvements here and there. You could turn this C my the C plus B minus. You could turn that thing into an A to get a much better grade on it. So that's what I think they're gonna try to do it away, especially in being a first round draft. You're like, oof, yeah. Uh, that was a um again that was a very interesting pick. Uh, but hey, now we gotta see how it works out, man. Uh, and he said, my question is, how much of an impact do you think uh the C nineteen season affected his play last year? Uh, he's only played football for five years, only played seven games in 2020, and wasn't able to train with his coaches until the fall. Away had five sacks in 2019 with a full offseason, and if he had put that in 2020, he would have been a top 15 pick. Developing outside linebackers is what the Ravens do. Excited to see him learn from McPhee and, <laughs> and he put Justin Houston. <laughs> We're going to see, man, but I – um. That that impacted everybody. That that just it didn't just impact him. It impacted, impacted the whole football world, man. Because it just changed everything so much with the level of access that players had to coaches, coaches had to players, players had to players, coaches had to coaches. It it hit everybody hard, man. Um, but now things are getting back to normal, uh, slowly but surely, and um. I'm 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 just ready for him to get with some NFL coaches because I, I think they they could really do some things with this guy. He again, it was a is it, it was a bit of a risky pick, I think, because um, again he is he's a project, um, and when you take a uh, project player in the first round, like you like okay, hey, you you going all in on that project, like all in. So with the Ravens, um, you do trust them to build a defensive guy, build him up, make him as strong as he could possibly be. Uh, and let him eat. So hopefully he's feasting on them quarterbacks real soon. Next question came from my boy Dominic. He said, what's up, man? Hope everything is good with you. My question is, after the Ravens not going for a tackle in the draft, I'm going to assume that a free agent is coming in and possibly out of Dennis Kelly and Alejandro Villanueva. If you had the choice, who would you prefer and why? Uh, I would say Dennis Kelly. Uh, be better overall tackle. Um, just better player. I think a little bit younger, too. Uh, but, yeah, I, I will go with Dennis Kelly. But... Honestly, Raven, Raven's probably not even going after one of them two dudes, man. They probably they, they probably got a little sneak attack plan. They probably not even going after either one of them two dudes, man. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and he said, do you think we can have one of the best O-lines in the league with our so-called projected starting five? I don't even think we got a projected. We ain't even got a projected starting five right now. So I can't say that because that's like, we, well, obviously Ronnie Stanley is there. 
um, Kevin Zeitler's there. Uh, Bozeman, now, now they talk, maybe he will be a center now. Maybe they will give him that shot to move back to his original position. But it, it's, it's so much unknown. It, it's way too early to answer that because we got to project the starting three, but we still missing two. Next question came from my boy Eric C. He said, I was just thinking Hayden Hurst wanted out of Baltimore because he wanted to be the number one tight end. Man, he has got to be sick right now. And, hey, maybe he is. Uh, and he's still, I mean, I'm recording this on May 2nd. They haven't picked up his fifth-year option yet. They haven't done it yet. Um, and, yeah, that clock is ticking. And, I mean, with them drafting a, a tight end in Kyle Pitts, they could, I wonder what they, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how they use him. Like, if they try to make him their wide receiver, like, if they try to convert him, be like, yeah, you were tight end before, but you played outside and you played in the slot. You played outside receiver. So you just moved around so much. Yeah, just be a wide receiver and still let Hayden Hurst be that guy. I, I wonder what they're going to do there. But I don't see them picking up that fifth year option uh, with Hayden Hurst. Um, I mean, it, it will give them another year to really decide, but uh, I just don't see it. They did give up a second round pick and some change for him now. But right now, it's just it's, it's not looking like it. So Hayden Hurst could be. Ooh, he, he got to be going through it, man. What, what a start to his NFL career, man. Because this guy, first round draft pick for the Ravens, their, their first first round pick in 2018 over Lamar Jackson. Um, and then he starts off good, starts off looking really good. I'm like, man, this dude catches everything. Then he got hurt. Mm, mm, mm. Lost his starting spot and never, never got it back. Um, then got traded to the Falcons. Oh, it, it was a big yikes of a season there overall for them. Uh, but then at his first at his first year with the Falcons, boom, they went and drafted a tight end at the, the number four pick. So Hayden Hurst got to be hurting. Next question came from my boy Mark. He said, I haven't heard anything about it as of yet, but I know several teams have been interested. Do you think the Ravens could be interested or would sign Eric Fisher? This is something that I was thinking about earlier. It really is because we've been hearing about Villanueva. We've been hearing about Dennis Kelly. But I feel like Ravens could end up pulling the okie doke uh, on the offensive line and just going after somebody who we ain't been hearing about they are interested in. Because, you know, that's what the Ravens like to do. And now we got a little business question from my guy Shadow Badger. He said, hey, Engraven, I was wondering about accessibility of sports on TV. I noticed how the NBA and MLB decided to make it harder for people to view their games. This is why their sports are dying. Uh, while the NFL allows people to watch local games. Here's the question. Do you think the NFL will have to make games free to watch from anywhere in the country? To survive in a new era of sports anyway hope you and the fam are doing well appreciate it um nothing is free in nfl will, would never give anything away for free there's always going to be some attached to it uh every commercial that you see uh, all these different advertisements and whatnot yeah that that's money right there uh, that, that's bread so no, nothing is going to be free uh, but the nfl the nfl is just I, they are just better than the NBA, better than the MLB. And I, I think one of the biggest reasons that the NFL is just better than those, and not, not even any bias from me, but I think it's because it's just so, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, I don't want to say exclusive, but it's, it's, it's right here, right now. It's very direct. It's 17 games now. It used to be 16 games. And those games count so much. They count so much. MLB, I don't even know how many games MLB got, but it definitely ain't no 16, 17 games. NBA, in a regular season, they have 82 games. So it's, it's like those seasons are so watered down and, and spread out. But the NFL is like right here, right now. Your team, they got to get going. Everything means that much more. It ain't no best out of seven series in the playoffs. No, it's one and done. A lot of teams, a lot of times, the best teams in those games don't even win because it 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 it's just so much, so much rapid stuff, man. It moves so fast, man. It moves fast, um, and that's why I feel like people's interest in the NFL is a lot higher than those other things because they they move a lot slower, man. They move a lot slower. But anyway, um. No, 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 nothing is ever free. So NFL is not going to give anything away for free. Um, they, they, it's always going to be a money maker for them. Next question came from my boy Javo. He said, with the draft over, what grade would you give EDC for his picks this year? Um, grade, there was some questionable stuff. There was some good stuff. There was some depth stuff. Um, it's kind of early, but I right now I would say, I'd probably say like B minus maybe. Yeah, probably like a B minus. 
Um, but it, it's it's very very early. And he said, "What are your expectations for our rookies?" Oh wow, um, Bateman. I expect him to play a lot. Away, I expect him to play a lot. Um, the third, uh, Brandon Stevens. That was an interesting one. I don't know what I expect from him. I'm really not sure. I know they said he's gonna be probably a free safety. Um, so I, I would expect the special teams from him. Um, is it Wade? Wade, the cornerback who he drafted, but he, they said he can play on the inside too. And when he when they said that, I was like, oh yes, please, that could be Tay Tay's backup. Oh man, that that pick I I love that pick. Um, the full there was a fullback too. The fullback we got, uh, I that one like had me scratching my head. I just I, I yeah I don't get that one. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, uh, I, but I don't get that one. Uh, and also, um, big, big, uh, big country. I really like that one a lot too. So he he could end up being a starter from the jump. Um, but he's definitely gonna be in competition with them boys to, to start. I, I think he's probably gonna end up winning it. But uh, so yeah, we got some guys that can make an immediate impact, and some guys that will have a uh, that I, I question what impact the Ravens see them making. So that that's why I say a, a, a B minus. And he said, "Who's your favorite pick besides Bateman?" Um, yeah, probably big country. Uh, and last question is, what happens to Boykin or, and Prochet with our new wide receiver core? They're going to have to fight, man. Both of them do. They are going to have to fight. It is going to be a fight. Straight up, man. All right, he said, does Prochet get cut and does Boykin get cut? Or do they try him at tight end if he doesn't step his game up this upcoming season? Hope all is well with you and the fam. And if Boykin doesn't get his stuff together. Oh, and he said, just like Boykin, if he doesn't get his stuff together, I'm out. Oof, man. That's rough. Yeah, we're gonna see, man. We're gonna see. It's um that not even the Bateman pick. The Bateman pick didn't make me flinch about Boykin, but that Tylen Wallace one did. So we'll see, man. Next question came from uh, Ryan. He said, "How excited were you when Baltimore drafted Rashad Bateman? Uh, because he went to Minnesota and he had experience in cold weather games, specifically in snow games. Oh, okay, I like that. I never thought about that before. Oh, you already know how excited I was. <laughs> but he said, second question: Would you trade next year's fifth, sixth, and seventh round pick?" And Miles Boykin to the Falcons for Julio Jones. Oh boy, um, I don't even think it would take Miles Boykin in there, man. Uh, I think you, you could you could just trade that stuff alone and probably get Julio. If they did that, <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at all, man. I, I would say overkill, man. Overkill, overkill. <laughs> you want to bring Julio on too? Oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm with it all day. All day. Next question came from my boy Greg. He said, been a minute since my last email. I had a thought. What would your opinion be if the Ravens moved Tyree Phillips from guard to right tackle? I think he played tackle in college. Thanks for all the great content. Hope you and your family as well. And let's go Ravens. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we've been talking about that on here. That would almost be an expectation because the Ravens, Orlando Brown Jr. leaving wasn't a surprise to them. Even before, I, before he said, I want to be a left tackle, I'm a left tackle. They are. They have to have already had a plan in place with that, and I think Tyree Phillips would be that answer for them there. Next question came from my boy Terrell B. He said, "Ain't Graven to me. This is a top five in my personal opinion for a draft for the Ravens, especially with maneuvering to cover many needs with top prospects in the draft. I know pandemic options helped a lot, but still, I give it an A plus after their draft wrap up, and there were no media questions other than depth at right guard that may need addressing, in which I can see. What's your grade after the draft? I appreciate your time and content as always, and hope all is well with you and the fam. Go Ravens and go team. Keep it clean. Appreciate it, Terrell. Shout out to you and shout out to your dad too, man." Um, I, I said I said a B minus, a, a B minus, uh, because yeah, like you made a good point. They did cover uh, a, a large portion of the needs. They they really did needs that pass rusher, and they double dipped that pass rusher. I believe they got somebody later on in the draft. Um, needs that receiver, young receivers, and they double dipped their uh, offensive line. Um, but the it was just a couple of questionable draft picks for me that uh I like I said I, I would give it a uh, a B minus. But again, hopefully that ends up being wrong. Hopefully it ends up being wrong in the long run, but we won't really know till the long run. Next question came from Manuel. He said, What's up, Engraven? Now you know I'm a Ravens fan, but I can't help to see the wasted opportunity that the Packers had to trade Aaron Rodgers after seeing him be disgruntled with the front office. On draft day, they could have taken two calls to get a second first round pick with other second or third round picks to build a team for Jordan Love and say to Aaron, You leaving? Okay, but we're getting something back from you. Then they would have this year to build something and get the rest next year. Stay safe. And hey, with Bateman, Hollywood, Watkins, Mandrews, Duvernay getting catches, let's hope Boykin responds to the competition to be the Anquan Bolden we want him to be. Oh, I love that. I love that positive vibe to Boykin, man. Shout out to Miles, man. Um, 
I can't say it's a wasted opportunity because that's Aaron Rodgers. Like you, you don't just <laughs> you you if you're gonna trade an Aaron Rodgers, you better be getting back a lot because that dude is that dude. He is that dude. You don't just get a one first one extra first round pick. Okay, Aaron Rodgers, bye, see ya. No, it is just it's not that simple. It's really not. Um, so we'll see what happens with Aaron Rodgers. I'm very interested to see how that whole storyline unfolds. But I, I've been watching. I've been in the background watching. Like, ooh, I've been making fun of my boy who's a Packers fan. But, but it's. <laughs> but yeah, we are gonna see, man. We are gonna see. Um, what if he went to Miami? Oof, that would be scary, man. It'd be good for him. He'd be nice weather down here and all that. But imagine that team. We gotta play him. I mean, we. So I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers' biggest reason for wanting to leave the Packers is so he don't got to get embarrassed by Lamar Jackson and them Ravens this year. Next question came from my boy Mac. He said, "Hello, Engraven. I'm just curious to know what your expectations are for Rashad Bateman entering his rookie season. Um, expectations. I, I say about, I say like six, seven hundred yards, about four touchdowns. I don't expect anything crazy. I, I, I really don't. I don't, I don't expect anything crazy. Uh, I think he'll have a, a significant impact on the team. Um, but." With the opportunities in the Ravens offense And again, like I said at the beginning of the video With the Greg Roman question Seeing is believing Seeing is believing So he's, cer he's certainly going to be on the field He's certainly going to be on there But how often will he be used What's the frequency of his use And just, you know how it goes, man So I am, uh, yeah, I say about like 700 yards Four touchdowns Now, hopefully he exceeds those expectations by far But again, you got to remember, as much as we love Rashad Bateman and love the pick, we have to remember the offense. And the last question on this episode of NFL question from subscribers came from my guy, Enonic. He said, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam. Long. You'll probably address these topics after the draft, but with the addition of the two wide receivers we drafted, who is out of the wide receiver room? Oof. Um, I would think that it, oh man, I think it would be Proche and, and Boykin. Um, if they, like, yeah. I think it'll be Proche and Boykin, man. I um, I hope not, but they 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 not only drafted one, but they drafted two receivers, man. Two, two. So it just added that much more competition. But hopefully with Boykin, he steps up and shows out, and like really shows out. But it's it's gonna be hard, man. It is going to be very very hard, like extremely hard, man. Uh, and he said number two, who goes on to become the new Chris Moore, and who becomes our return specialist? Oof. Um, wow, that, wow, okay Um, wow I, I hope nobody be, becomes the next Chris Moore I hope they can exceed that uh, But our return specialists, they may start Duvernay there again uh, We'll see But I, I, think it, I think it could remain Duvernay uh, on uh, kickoff and punt return Because he, he got better speed than James Prochet He's more explosive than James Prochet Prochet's hands, I mean, are, are certified But Duvernay's hands are certified too um, so I think Duvernay remains a return specialist as far as Chris Moore. Chris Moore would be that, uh, what was he, a fourth-round pick, but just never. He was just kind of in and out of the loop and just hung around for a long time. I, I hope nobody becomes that, really. Uh, and, and Chris Moore, he showed flashes here and there, um, but he just he was somebody that never really got that opportunity like that. And um, it just – and then he just ended up being a forgotten man. And the last question from Enonic, he said, also – Although insulted, Eric DaCosta added two weapons to the group he believes in. Does this mean our passing game will become a top 30 passing juggernaut in the NFL? <laughs> Thanks for making Team Keep It Clean a great community for NFL discussion and sharing. <laughs> I do think they'll get there. I do think. This <laughs> guy said top 30. It's 32 teams. We talk about top 30. But hey, we've been bottom, bottom 32. But so he got a valid point. So, but yeah, I I I, I do think we'll get there, Enoch. I, I appreciate you, man.